Welcome to my updated 2.0 no bullshit guide to making Tarkov run better. There's a timestamp in the description and in the video, so if you scrub over it, you'll be able to skip this introduction and get straight into the meat of the video. After taking in a ton of community feedback on the first video, I've changed and updated a few things. It's important to remember that testing on my PC may be different from testing on yours, and the fixes that have worked for me and my small group of friends may cause issues for a small number of people when this torrent of information is released to a wider audience. Some of these settings will absolutely make your game run better, while others may be hit or miss. Everything I'm showing here today has and still does work for me. It's split into two categories, from recommended to optional, because I took into account some of the feedback I received on the first video. Additionally, some values are changed to make them more compatible with a wider audience and a wider range of PC hardware. Now, with no further ado, let's cheeky break our talk of. So you have a balling PC, and it eats Chrome tabs for breakfast. But when you launch Tarkov, it looks like that. Now, would you like to increase your performance and make it run a bit more like this? Excellent, stick around, I will show you how to do that. So to be fully transparent, what you just saw was an offline raid comparison. I did this to give you an idea of exactly what the performance difference would be without any external factors in play. What you're looking at now is an online raid, where there are multiple PMCs, scavs, and server jitter. So this gives you a good idea of what my online performance looks like. I by no means have a state-of-the-art rig. I'm going to put my specifications up on screen right now for you to see, and you can compare to yours. So after a long drawn-out intro, let's get into it. Welcome once again to the desktop. So the first thing I recommend if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM is to grab Memory Cleaner. Now we're just going to click on download. It'll download the file. Once done, we can just run it. Once run, it'll ask us if we would like to install it. We will click yes, accept, and it'll install. After installation, we will have Memory Cleaner open. We will click on options, trim processes working set when usage exceeds 80% and clear system cache when usage exceeds 80%. Now, these two settings recommended for Tarkov if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you have more than 16 gigabytes, I don't recommend running Memory Cleaner. One thing to note about Memory Cleaner is only run this while you're using Tarkov. If you have finished playing Tarkov, open the hidden icons bar, right click on Memory Cleaner and select Exit. Make sure to not run it when you're just doing general things in Windows, like watching videos, watching a live stream listening to music, talking on Discord, things like that, as you would be hard pressed to fill up 16 gigabytes of RAM and at that point the software becomes redundant. In case you're worried about being banned for using this, here is a Reddit thread asking if it's bannable and Nikita himself replying. Now I'm going to make a strong recommendation that you should do whether you play Tarkov or not is to check whether your RAM is running at its rated speed. So if you bought 3200 or 3600 megahertz RAM, it won't automatically run at that speed. There is a setting in the BIOS that needs to be checked for this to happen. How we're going to check this is we're going to right click on start, run task manager. From task manager, we'll click on performance at the top and then on memory. So once memory is open, we can see the speed here. If the speed is lower than what you paid for, I recommend you check in your motherboard's documentation how to enable DOCP or XMP. Now, many motherboards support multiple XMP profiles. What this means is that certain profiles that you can select will be higher performance profiles with tighter timings. However, these tighter timings can lead to system instability. I would recommend testing through the various profiles that your motherboard does offer and see which ones run the most stable. Next, we're going to change some full screen optimizations for Tarkov in Windows. We're going to go from the launcher, click on the drop down menu under our name, select setting. We're going to scroll down until we see game directory, click on the game directory. It's going to open our EFT folder. Now we want to right click on escape from Tarkov.exe not underscore be just exe right click go to properties select compatibility we will disable full screen optimizations thereafter click on change high dpi settings at the bottom override high dpi scaling behavior and scaling is performed by application we will click ok and then we will click apply these settings are not recommended if you live stream or record video as they may cause flickering or stuttering in the recording program 
Next, highly recommended, we are going to download and install Process Lasso. We will click on download free. Once downloaded, we can just install the software. Once opened, it'll look a little something like this. Now we do want to have Tarkov running. You can see mine running in my taskbar. So we're going to scroll down in Process Lasso. Look for escape from Tarkov.exe. Once again, avoid underscore BE, just the dot exe. We're going to right click, go to CPU priority always and set it to high. Thereafter, we're going to go to CPU affinity always and select disable smt you can also manually do this by clicking on select cpu affinity and checking all the even numbered cores do bear in mind affinity is only applicable to multi-threaded cpus if your cpu has got eight cores and eight threads you will not be able to select disable smt and i also don't recommend deselecting any cpus as all you'll be doing is disabling physical cores and that kind of works against what we're aiming for thereafter you can search for power select choose a power plan now we will have bitsum highest performance power plan available to us bitsum the company who makes process lasso provides bitsum optimized cpu performance this works fantastic for tarkov we will select that and then close out taking a look at nvidia's control panel we're going to right click on the desktop select nvidia control panel once loaded we'll click on manage 3d settings from there select program settings we will select a program to customize choose escape from tarkov.exe from the drop down if it doesn't show up we can click on add and then select it from here if it still doesn't show up we can click on browse go to the eft folder and select the exe from there i'm just going to slowly go through the settings like this you can copy them also monitor technology, I have a G-Sync compatible screen. Just make sure that if you don't, just select use global setting. One of my friends with an AMD graphics card was kind enough to take screenshots of his AMD control panel settings so that it's easier for you to navigate. Now we're going to be looking at hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. How we're going to do this is we're going to search for graphics settings in Windows. Here you will find hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you don't record or stream, I highly recommend turning this on. This will absolutely give you better performance in game. If you are streaming or recording, however, this does cause issues with the recording or streaming program. Next, regardless of whether you have set tags on or off, we're going to say choose an app to set preference. Desktop app, we're going to browse going to find escape from tarkov.exe once again not the be just this escape from tarkov.exe click add it's going to be here we will click on it select options and then go to high performance and save lastly for recommended window settings going to click on start go to settings from here we're going to go to gaming first things first this is what game bar will look like for you we will disable it as well as uncheck this checkbox then we're going to go to game mode and make sure game mode is on. I did hear the outcry and concerns about this. That's why I am making it an optional setting. You don't necessarily need to do this. If you're worried about viruses or anything in that line, skip over this step. First, we're going to click on start, search for virus and threat protection. Once in, we will scroll down to virus and threat protection settings. Select manage settings, scroll down until we see exclusions. Select add or remove an exclusion from there. We will click on add an exclusion as a folder. Select the Battlestate Games folder as the exclusion, as well as add another exclusion of a folder. This time, let's go into the BSG folder and select the EFT folder as an exclusion. For a fresh GPU install, what this does is it clears out everything related to your GPU driver. That includes configs, old files, everything like that. So it does differ from just a regular driver uninstallation. I recommend doing this just so that we can get the cleanest driver possible for Tarkov. What we're going to do is scroll down, select a server to download from. I generally use the Netherlands, it doesn't really matter. Once you click on that, it's going to take you to another page and the download will automatically begin. Once downloaded, we can open the zip file. From here, we're going to run DDU. Select a place to extract it. Generally, the desktop is the easiest. Once extracted, we will have this folder. We can open that, run it as an administrator. When DDU opens for the first time, it's going to give you this dialog. We can just click OK. It will also bring up the settings. And this options menu is to select this checkbox at the bottom to prevent Windows from installing its own driver. We will click close and then from there it's going to tell us that we are not in safe mode. 
Now, 99.999% of the time for a GPU driver, you don't need to be in safe mode. This is generally only for audio drivers and chipset drivers. I've uninstalled hundreds of graphics card drivers in the past using this and not once been in safe mode and never encountered an issue. We will click OK. From here, we select the device type. We're going for a GPU uninstall. It'll automatically select whether you have an NVIDIA or AMD card. And then we're just going to click clean and restart. The PC is going to run through a few uninstall commands and then it'll restart the PC for you. Before doing this, I advise that you download the latest WHQL driver from the manufacturer's website, whether that's NVIDIA or AMD, so that you can have it on hand once your PC has restarted. When the PC restarts, things are going to look a little bit wonky because the graphics drivers are not installed. Just go to the downloads where your new driver is and install it from there as you normally would. Keep in mind, if you've uninstalled your graphics card driver and reinstalled it as we just have, your settings in the NVIDIA control panel as well as the AMD control panel will have reset, so just enter those again. Also, if you're running a high refresh rate monitor, don't forget to right click on your desktop, go to display settings, scroll down to advanced display settings. From here, we will select the high refresh rate display and make sure that the refresh rate is on the highest. MSI Afterburner is optional, but we would like to use the overlay to monitor GPU, CPU, and RAM usage, as well as see what our FPS is. We're going to click on Download Afterburner, go through the regular install process. Our Afterburner setup comes pre-packaged with RevaTuner Statistics Server. Do select Yes during the install to install RevaTuner as well. Once installed, we can run Afterburner. Your Afterburner skin may look different to mine, but the settings are the same. We will click on Settings. Go to monitoring. How you enable an option is by clicking on it, checking show in on-screen display and then applying. So we would like GPU usage in on-screen display. CPU usage in on-screen display. RAM usage in on-screen display and frame rate in on-screen display. We're going to make sure all of those are checked and then click apply. When we start Tarkov, and every time we start Tarkov, first we are going to go to the graphics settings and make sure the screen mode is on full screen. Then click save. Thereafter, we're going to press Alt plus Enter twice. You can see it's windowed the screen, press it again, and it full screens the game. Tarkov does have an issue that even though it shows full screen in your settings, it may not always launch full screen. Next, in the game settings, we are going to check automatic RAM cleaner and we are going to check only use physical cores. The reason we do this, even though we have external programs doing these functions, is that we don't want anything clashing on our PC. From here, we will go to the graphics tab. This is where the in-game overlay becomes very important. What I recommend doing is to go into an offline raid and monitor what your GPU usage currently is. Thereafter, increase your settings until your GPU usage hits somewhere around 80 to 90%. We would like a little bit of headroom over that. So that's why we only aim for 80 to 90%. Now, in multiple games, Tarkov being one of them, higher settings can sometimes lead to higher performance. This is something you will have to try out for yourself. For me and many others, it does work this way, so I highly recommend you do that. Important in-game is to make sure that VSync is checked on. If you're unable to select it, make sure to disable low latency. Turn it on and then re-enable low latency. Additionally, make sure all of these are unchecked. You may leave high quality color on. For me, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but it does decrease performance. This here is something you can test to see whether you prefer the high quality colors. If you're still struggling with stutters, turn this on. What this does is it allows the game to render only what is being shown on screen, nothing behind you or around you. Now, this is only recommended if you're running from an SSD. If you're running from a SATA SSD, leave these settings at the lowest. If you are running from an NVMe that reaches 3000 plus, you can increase the disk usage limit as well as the buffer size. These are one of those settings that I turn off because it does cause some textures to be very low resolution and I don't like that. But for others, this may work and help the stuttering a lot. Then lastly, in the sound options, this setting has been a big problem for majority of the player base this wipe. Disable binaural audio, make sure that it's off and that'll decrease stuttering a lot. There we go. That's all there is to it. That should make your game run a lot better. Now I do stream on Twitch. If any of this helped you out, come and say hello. I would love to hear from you and how it's affected you. Good luck with the raids and cheeky breaky.